Hello students. Today we are going to start with unit 7 that is interfacing chips. In this unit we will cover the following topics. Starting with programmable peripheral interface that is IC8255. In this IC we will touch upon what is the concept of ports and its addresses followed by the various IO mode, the control word format and the bit set reset mode also called as BSR mode. Thereafter, we will do some practice questions related to IC8255. Then, we will be touching upon programmable interrupt controller that is IC8259. We will understand what is the internal architecture of this IC. Thereafter, we will understand the sequence of operation and the various command words. After that, we will be moving to serial communication. And in this topic, we will understand what is framing with respect to RH-232C. So, we will start with the first topic that is Programmable Peripheral Interface IC8255. So, let us begin. Let us try to understand the meaning of each of the words in this Programmable Peripheral Interface. Programmable means something whose behavior can be controlled by means of software instruction. Whereas, the peripheral relates to input and output device with respect to your microprocessor. An interface means something which links one device with another. Thus, we can say that Programmable Peripheral Interface or in short PPI IC8255 is a general purpose programmable I.O. device which is designed to interface the microprocessor with its outside world such as keyboard, monitor, ADC or analog to digital converter, DAC or digital to analog converter etc. It can be programmed as per the user requirements. So let me just write it out for you. So PPI IC8255 is a general purpose programmable I.O. device designed to interface microprocessor with its peripherals and can be programmed as per user requirements. Now, programmable peripheral interface, it performs the input and output functions by taking a hardware approach through software control. So, it adopts hardware approach through software control. Now, what does this mean? While simple ICs such as latches and tri-state buffers, they are hardwired. Hardwired meaning, so they can perform only specific functions. Whereas, this programmable peripheral interface, they can perform many functions depending upon how it is programmed. And it provides various functions such as multiple I.O. devices, time delays, it can also be included as counters and it can provide multiple interrupts also. So, let me number it. So, broadly four functions it can be used to provide. Now, let us see by means of a block diagram where does this IC8255 fit into the overall picture of your microprocessor being interfaced with your I.O. devices. So, usually what do we do is we have a 8086 microprocessor and the input device and output device are directly connected to the hardware pins of the interrupt such as your NMI or INTR. Now, usually INTR is used. Now, we see that here we are having a limitations. We are only having two hardware pins and we are not able to even program how this device should act and various other functionalities such as your timer delay or you want to initiate some bidirectional data transfer etc. When we use IC8255, the scenario changes. So, you are having 8086 microprocessor, then you are having IO device that is input device and output device and in between these two blocks comes your 8255 programmable peripheral interface. Now, if you see your 8255 programmable peripheral interface is connected by means of this bidirectional data lines. Why it is bidirectional? Because this is interfaced with your input and output devices simultaneously and therefore it needs a bidirectional data lines. Now, let us understand the important pins and signals of this IC. IC8255 that is your programmable peripheral interface is a 40 pin IC. Now, in this representation, we have highlighted on the left top corner that is your 8086 microprocessor and the top right corner your peripheral devices. 
so which you have seen in the previous slide i have just sorted it up and moved it towards the top so that we can represent the various signals in the remaining part this ic8255 it consists of three bidirectional io ports so we are having port a port b and port c so if you can see each of them is 8 bit in size that is port a is 0 to 7 so 8 bits port b is also 0 to 7 8 bits and port c also 0 to 7 now why it is all bidirectional because each of them can be attached to either input device or output device so it can perform both input and output function that is why they are bidirectional in nature if you can see this port a is green in color and port b is yellow whereas port c is a mix of both now why is this so this is because port c is further divided into two parts that is four bits of each so port c is having port c 0 to port c 3 and port c 4 to port c 7 so it is further divided into two equal parts of four bits each and this is called as port c lower so port c 0 to port c 3 or pc 0 to pc 3 is called as port c lower and pc 4 to pc 7 is called as port c upper these are controlled by two different control groups so you are having a control group a now this control group a this controls port A and port C upper. So port A consists of 8 bits that is port PA0 to PA7 and PC4 to PC7. So this is controlled by a control group called as control group A. Likewise, we are having a control group B which controls port B0 to port B7 and PC0 to PC3. All these ports that is your port A, port B and port C are connected to the peripheral devices. There is one IC called as control register which is there inside your IC8255 which controls which of these ports has to be connected to which of the peripheral devices and how these ports should act whether it should act as an input device or output device or as a bidirectional data transfer. All these things that is your port A, port B, port C as well as your control register needs to be controlled by your microprocessor and how is it controlled so for understanding this let's understand the signals which are coming from your left hand side that is your microprocessor side now there are two signals that is your a1 a0 along with your cs bar cs bar is chip select and you can see there is a bar on that so it's a active low signal so depending on the values of these three signals that is your chip select a1 and a0 now a1 and a0 are your address lines so let us try to recollect the concept of address lines. In your 8086 microprocessor, there are 20 address lines. Out of that, the lowermost two address lines, that is your A0 and A1, they are used to select among all these four things. So you can see two address lines, so it can give you a permutation combination of four or four options, depending upon the values of zeros and one. That will try to understand it later. But two lines will give you four options, and they are used to select between port A, port B, port C, or your control register. And chip select is used to activate your IC. So apart from that, the signals which are coming from your 8086 microprocessor will be your read and write bar. So if the microprocessor needs to read a data from your input device, it will use a read bar signal, which is an active loop. And if it wants to write a uh, data on your output device, it will use a write bar signal. Apart from that, it will make use of your data lines that is D0 to D7. Now, as you can see, this is a bidirectional data lines. So, data lines are bidirectional and address lines are unidirectional. So, D0 to D7 are your bidirectional data lines which can be used to either send or receive your data depending upon whether it is connected to an input device or an output device. And lastly, we are having a reset pin. So, which resets the functionality of your IC8255 so that it can be again programmed depending upon what the user wants. Now these are the important pins and signals and the two more signals which is your VCC and ground so I have omitted that two signals here because it is obvious for every IC you will be having those two signals. Now let me just summarize the entire part which we have covered here. So your IC8255 consists of two control groups, control group A which includes port A and port C upper. Now port C upper is your the upper half of your port C that is PC4 to PC7 so four bits are allocated there. And there is another control group, control group B, which is your port B and port C lower. So port C lower consists of PC0 to PC3. Signals which is coming from your microprocessor 8086 is A1, A0. This is a very important signal which is used to select ports and the control register. And the remaining signals are read write bar and your bidirectional data lines along with your chip select and reset. Now what we will do is 
will try to see the entire block diagram of your IC8255. Now let us discuss the block diagram for IC8255. This is just for the representation purpose. You need not to remember this block diagram. So we are just going in depth what we have just seen before about the important instance signals. So if you see, this is your group A control or control group A and this block is your control group B. Now control group A, you can see two lines which are emanating from this. So th the first one is going to group A that is your port A and the second one is going to your group A port C upper. So as what we have discussed earlier, your port A and port C upper is called as group A and for that we are having a control unit that is group A control. Likewise, if we go to group B control, this will control two ports. One is your port C lower and the another is port B. So port B and port A, each of them are 8 bits. That is why 8 is written here and you are having a representation PB0 to PB7. Likewise, you are having port C but it is divided into two parts, port C upper and port C lower. Since it is divided into two parts, so the 8 bit port gets converted to each 4 bits. So that's why 4 and 4 is written here and PC4 to PC7 for port C upper and PC0 to PC3 for port C lower. Now this is towards your peripheral side. Now coming to your 8086 microprocessor side, you are having a read write control logic which will be writing into the control register. So here you are having the control register and which of these ports or the control register has to be selected. That is determined by your A1, A0 signal. Now this signal which you are seeing here is your chip select signal. So it is an active low signal. So if this signal is set to low or is it is 0, then your 8255 is activated. If it is set to 1, then it is deactivated. The rest of the signals which you have already seen is your read bar, write bar and reset. And here you are having a bi-directional data bus. Now this, there is a data bus buffer which will store the data temporarily for the transfer of the data either to from your IC to your microprocessor side or from the microprocessor to your IC side. So that is why we are having a buffer. Now apart from that you are having two power supply signals which is your plus 5 volt and ground. So again I am saying this is just for representation purpose you need not remember this block diagram. Now we know that the microprocessor needs to interact with four entities your port A, your port B and your port C along with your control register which is present in the read write control logic. Now let us try to understand how does the microprocessor selects each one of them. As discussed before, we have seen A0 and A1 are the lines which are coming from the microprocessor and chip select is used for controlling the whether your IC8255 is activated or deactivated. Now these two lines A1 and A0, so we can get four sets of permutation combinations. So let me first write that. So it, both of them can be 0 or 1, 0, 1, 1, then another one is 1, then we are having 0, then followed by both of them once. Now, if the IC is activated, so for the IC to get activated, the chip select should be all zeros. So, what happens in the first case? When both A1 and A0 are 0, your port A gets selected. If A1 is 0 and A0 is 1, your port B gets selected. And if A1 is 1 and A0 is 0, your port C gets selected. And when both of them are 1, your control register is selected. Now, this is when your chip select is 0. When chip select is 1, this means your IC is deactivated or it is not selected. So, irrespective of the condition of A1 and A0, so I can write here, don't care, the IC can be said to be deactivated. So this is how your different ports or your control register is selected by means of your A1 and A0 signals. And chip select is used to either activate or deactivate your IC8255. Now once we are done understanding this part, we can go ahead and understand what is a control word format and which explains the importance of the various bits in the control register. The behavior of IC8255 is controlled by means of control register which is of 8 bits in size which is represented here as D7 to D0. The data written into the control register is called as control word. Please don't get confused with the terminology. As mentioned, even though the actual data written in the control register is only 8 bits, it is still called as control word and not control byte. 
Now let us understand the functionality of each of these bits. So as you can see, I have already colored the first three bits that is D0 to D2 as yellow and the D3 to D6 that is the next four bits as green and D7 is left as white. So what I want to highlight here is D0 to D2 is used for your control group B. So as we have seen the color coding from the very first diagram or the block diagram of your IC8255. So these three bits are used for your control group B. Now when I am saying control group B it means port B and port C lower. Whereas these four bits the ones in the green is used for control group A that is your port A and port C upper. And D7, try to understand what does this D7 bit means in the later point of time. Starting with your D0 bit. So this bit is used for port C lower. So port C lower stands for PC0 to PC3. So if this bit is 1, that means the PC0 to PC3 will act as input port. And if this bit is 0, this will act as a output port. So it is very easy to understand. So if it is 1, now you can see 1 looks very much similar to your i. So 1 corresponds to your input and 0 looks similar to your o. So 0 corresponds to your output. You can remember by this mechanism also. Then coming to your d1 bit. So this is used for your port b. Now port b, the entire 8 bits, if this d1 bit is 1, this port b will function as your input port. If this is 0, this will function as your output port. Now D2 is used for mode selection. Now what does this mean? Mode selection for the entire group B port. So group B that is your port B and port C lower. Which mode this both port B and port C lower should work that is determined by your D2 bit. Now mode selection in your IC8255 it corresponds to your IO mode. Now when you are talking about IO mode, uh, for time being you can understand that this IO mode is of three types, mode 0, mode 1 and mode 2. Now your control group B, if this D2 bit is 1, this will work as your mode 1 and if it is 0, it will work as mode 0. Even though there are three modes for the mode selection, your control group B can only work in mode 1 and mode 0. There is no mode 2 for your control group B. What is this different modes? We will understand in our next topic. So for time being, we can just understand that the control group B will only work as mode 1 or mode 0 depending upon the value of your D2 bit. Now moving to your D3 bit. So as you can see, now D3 bit corresponds to your control group A. So whatever we have done from your D0 to D2, the same thing gets repeated here also. So D3 bit will be port C upper. So this corresponds to PC4 to PC7. And again, if it is 1, so PC4 to PC7 will act as an input port. And if it is 0, it will act as an output port. Then coming to your D4 bit. So D4 bit, it is for your port A. Now port A, if it is 1, it is input and if it is 0, it is output. So let me put one more enter here for similarity. Yeah. Now coming to your D5 and D6 bit, both these bits when combined is used to select your mode for your group A ports or group A that means port A and port C upper. Now as we have discussed, there are three modes for mode selection for your group A ports. Now these three modes, if we want to select either of these modes, that is mode 0, mode 1 and mode 2, we need minimum of two bits. So when we are having one bit, we can have two combinations. So either 0 or 1. If you are having two bits, we can have four combinations. So we need minimum of two bits to select either of the three modes. This D5 and D6, both of them are 0 then it is used for mode 0. If it is 0, 1, it is used for mode 1. And if it is 1 and don't get, so whether it is 1 or 0 and 1 or 1, then it is used for mode 2. So this is for the mode selection of your group A ports. Now let me make it center align. So as you can see, 
0 0 that is d6 is 0 and d5 is 0 it is mode 0 if d6 is 0 and d5 is 1 it is mode 1 and if d6 is 1 and d5 can be either 0 or 1 that means your group a will work as your mode 2 so please remember it is group a not port a so group a means the port a and port c upper now what about this d7 bits d7 bit if it is 1 then your ic8255 will work as input or output mode and if it is 0 then it will work as bsr mode so now let us try to understand what does this input or output or bsr mode means so this is a very important part the functionality of d7 bit determines the main behavior of your ic8255 so let us try to understand this aspect of your ic8255 ic8255 can be operated in different modes depending upon the d7 bit of your control register now we will discuss what is the importance of this d7 bits so we know that if d7 bit is 0 it will be bsr mode or bit set reset mode and if it is 1 it will be in io mode now what is this bit set reset mode so from the name itself you can understand that it is used for either setting that means making that particular bit as 1 or making it as 0 so that is why it is called as bit set reset mode so for this mode the port which is involved is your port c now port c individual bits can be made at as 1 or 0 and it does not have an effect on your io mode so the importance of this bsr mode will try to understand by means of certain questions for time being i can just say that it is used for individually setting your port c bits as 1 or 0 now where it can be used suppose you are having five leds and you want to attach each of these leds to one of the pins of your port c so since there are eight pins of your port c i can use five pins among them to attach my leds now if i want to sequentially turn on or turn off these leds i can use this bsr mode for that purpose now let's move to your io mode or input output mode now this io mode is set or this your IC8255 goes into IO mode when your D7 bit is 1. As discussed before, your IO mode is of three types that is your mode 0. In this mode 0, all your ports that is your port A, B and C works as your simple input or output ports. Now why it is said as simple, we will understand it in the next mode which is your mode 1. Now mode 1 in this your port A can function as your handshaking input output port and port B can also be used for handshaking or port B can also be used for your simple IO ports that is why it is given AND OR OR B fine so port A will be functioning that is port A will be sure shot functioning as your handshaking IO port whereas port B it is an optional you can make it function as handshaking IO port or it can function as a simple IO port and port C is used for generating your handshaking signals. So I repeat, your port C is used for generating the handshaking signals. Now, when we are discussing about this terminology called as handshake, what does this mean? If two strangers are trying to communicate with each other, they will first exchange pleasantries or they will exchange a handshake. Now, handshake ensures or it breaks the ice for the conversation to start. Likewise, in your microprocessor and your peripheral devices, the communication happens with a handshake and this will ensure reliability in the data transmission or reception. So handshake is a process which happens before actual transmission or receiving of data and this ensures reliability. Handshaking also ensures interrupt handling facilities. We will understand this when we are discussing about handshaking feature in your mode 1. And for handshaking, we need special signals and these signals are generated by using port C. So if you see in comparison to your mode 0, your mode 1, port C will not work as your IO port but it will be used for generating your handshaking signals and your interrupt handling signals. Now moving to your mode 2. In mode 2, your port A acts as a bi-directional data bus. Port B can either function in mode 0 or mode 1 and port C is used for generating your handshaking signals. So let us try to understand individually what does each of them mean. In the previous case such as your mode 0 or even in mode 1 we see that port A or port B so let us talk about first mode 0. So simple IO ports so I slash O it means either input or output but 
in mode 2 you see that port a is working as bidirectional your port a can work in both the ways bidirectional data bus means suppose modem if you are having a modem which sends the data so either in internet you upload the data or download the data so it's a bidirectional in nature it's not just like your monitor or your keyboard which happens only in one direction so your bidirectional data bus is your port a whereas your port b can work either in mode 0 or mode 1 so mode 0 means your port b can be your simple io port or in mode 1 that means your port b can work either as input or output with handshaking feature and port c as like your mode 1 it is used for generating your handshaking signals. Now with this, we are done with understanding the various modes in which your IC8255 can work. We have discussed in depth your IO mode. Now how does this BSR mode works? That we will discuss in the next video along with we will do some practice question to get more clarity for the concepts which we have discussed so far.